and welcome from the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium, Alaska Native Epicenter. This video is designed to be a brief walkthrough of the Alaska Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, also known as BRFSS, or sometimes BRFSS. The BRFSS app is found at this web address, alaska-dph.shinyapps.io forward slash BRFSS. When you navigate to this page, a user agreement will display. Please read the user agreement in its entirety, but here's a brief summary of what you're agreeing to. By using this data set, you agree to the three following items. You will not attempt to identify any individuals, you will cite any data that you use in any publication, and you will notify the Alaska Burfus program at the email or phone number listed under Contact Us of any publications or products that you create using this data. Once you have read through the user agreement on your own, please click I agree. Please note that this web page will time out after several minutes of inactivity and require you to resubmit the user agreement. I will have my mouse highlighted for you to follow for the duration of this tutorial. This is the home page, also known as the home tab. There are three other tabs, the about Alaska Burfus tab, which provides some background information, the Explore Data tab, which is where the data predominantly lives, and the Cross Tabulation tab, which is forthcoming. When we click the About tab, we find information regarding the history of BRFIS, what health indicators are available, and how the BRFIS data is analyzed. You will also note that the Home, About, Explore Data, and Cross Tabulation tabs stay on the top of the page regardless of which tab you navigate to. We will now click on the Explore Data tab, where you will begin to access the available BRFIS data. We'll want to start on the left-hand side in the gray box. First, select a topic from the drop-down menu. You'll see the topics are grouped into a variety of categories. For this tutorial, we will select Cancer and Cancer Screening. Once you select a topic, relevant indicators specific to that topic will populate. Next. Let's select the indicator. Again, this drop-down menu will load according to the topic selection. For this tutorial, we will scroll down and select colorectal cancer screening 50 to 75, which stands for among 50 to 75 years old. Note that we can use the About Indicator button to see more detail about the chosen indicator, such as the description, the years available, what questions are asked for this variable, and if this question is asked by the CDC, that is the Centers for Disease Control, or if it was added by the state of Alaska, simply click Close in the bottom right or the X in the top right to return back to the previous screen. Once we have selected a topic and an indicator, the area to the right will populate with both a graph and a table below. Please note that the graph and the table below are underneath this tab called Indicator. There are two other tabs here, Trend and Geographic, which we will explore later in this video. The graph that generates is based off the topic and indicator selection, and it includes basic statistics. For example, if we hover over the bars in the bar graph, we can see that it comes up with a pop-up that says what the response is, the percent, and the 95% confidence interval. For example, if we hover over the bar in the bar graph, we can see that this is the bar for when the response equals yes, and that this bar represents 64.8%, and the 95% confidence interval is 62.6 to 66.9. If we were to interpret this, we would say that for 2016, 2018, and 2020, nearly 65% of adults aged 50 to 75 in Alaska met the colorectal cancer screening guidelines. Please note that these basic statistics are also populated in the table below. There's also an additional column for RSE, which stands for relative standard error, and any flags attached to the response estimate. We'll come back to the table options momentarily. We also have the ability to filter a query by using the filters option in the gray box to the left. For instance, we can select a race group, the default is all race groups, but for our example, we can select the Alaska Native population. We also have the option to select a specific public health region. The default is statewide, but for example, we could choose to only look at the interior Alaska. 
or only southeast, and both the graph and the table will respond accordingly. If we want to return to filter defaults, simply scroll back up to statewide underneath public health region and underneath race, please select all race groups. If we hover over the little blue information icon next to public health region, we can see that it tells us that we can use this button to look at a description of how the public health regions are constructed. Let's go ahead and click on that. And a pop-up appears that tells us what the public health regions are and what's included in them. We can use the close button in the lower right-hand corner or the X in the upper right-hand corner to return back to the previous screen. Okay, so now we know about our filter options and for this example, we've chosen to stay with the default of all race groups and the state as a whole. Let's look at our options directly beneath the indicator tab. We can see that we can also stratify our topic by demographic. This default on this drop-down menu is none, but we could choose to stratify by multiple demographics such as race, sex, age group, education level, and more. In this example, let's look at race. Again, both our graph and our table populate according to our selections made above and include basic statistics. So we can hover over any bar on the graph to see the statistics associated with that particular response. Notice here that there is an option to select a demographic level. The default is to show all levels, but we can then choose the filter radio button. And this gives us an option to use a drop down menu to choose one or more of the options to filter by. So, for example, if we were only looking at the Alaska Native population, we could simply select only the Alaska Native population, and the graph in the table would respond accordingly. What makes this filter different than the filter on the left is that you are allowed to select two demographic levels or three demographic levels at once. So I can both click the Alaska Native population and the white population, and both will appear in both the graph and the table below. I'm going to unselect the white population, so we're only going to keep looking at the Alaska Native population in this example. If you would like to go back to all levels, simply click all levels. We can also directly compare groups by using the group button. Once you click group, the same drop down menu appears where we can once again select our demographic level to group. This option will combine the remaining groups into one category. So if we want to compare the Alaska Native population to the Alaska non native population, we can simply click the Alaska Native population and the data center will automatically group both the white population and the other race and ethnicity group together into something called remainder. So now I can directly compare the Alaska native population to the Alaska non-native population. And again, this does this both to our graph and to our table below. You can kind of think about this as creating a kind of binary variable where we choose one level of a demographic and we're comparing it to the remainder simply the combination of the remaining demographics in our selection. Please note that we have some interactivity here in addition to just the statistics we see on the bar graph. So for example, if I only wanted to look at the response that was yes for both the Alaska native population and the Alaska non-native population, I can simply go over to the legend on the right-hand side and double click yes, which will only keep in this case, the purple bars that represent yes for both the Alaska Native population and the Alaska non-native population. Please note that this doesn't change what you see in the table below. It simply changes what you see on the graph. If I want to add back in the no response, simply click once on no and it will come back. We can also use the select year or years drop down menu to select a single year multiple years or all the years. Just like when we use the other drop-down menus, you can see the check marks by the years you have selected. For instance, by default, this is showing 2016, 2018, and 2020. 
But if we only wanted to look at 2020, we could select deselect all and only click 2020. Click out of the box for a moment, give the program a moment to respond. And now we can see the estimate for those who did and did not meet colorectal cancer screening guidelines for 2020 only. If we want to go back, we can simply click select all if we want all of the years and our graph again will respond accordingly, the table as well. Let's go back and let's look at what we were looking at before. So let's only select 2016, 2018, and 2020. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on 2014 and that will leave 2016, 2018, and 2020. The last thing I wanna look at on this particular graph is the plot options. So we can use the plot options button in the lower right-hand corner to add confidence intervals visually. So simply select the little box and confidence intervals will automatically populate on the graph. We also have the option to download our plot as a PNG file. If you click download plot while you have the confidence intervals selected, the plot will download with the confidence intervals on them. If you don't want the confidence intervals on your graph that you're going to download, simply deselect them, wait a second for them to be removed from the graph and click download plot. The download will go to wherever downloads go on your computer, potentially your downloads folder. All right, let's take a moment to focus on the table. So, Similarly to the plot options, we also have a table options. This allows us to go ahead and download the data as a CSV file, um, which is typically opened in whatever your computer uses to open CSV files. So it might be Microsoft Excel or some other similar program. So if I go ahead and click download data, my download will begin and it will go to wherever downloads go on your computer. Just like the graph above, the table is also interactive. Not only does the graph highlight when I'm looking at particular rows and responses, I can use the search button. So I can type in Alaska, which will only return rows that simply have Alaska. Please note that this is not case sensitive. If I want to return back to what I've seen before, simply delete what you had in the search bar. We can also sort columns by hovering our cursor over the gray up and down arrows that are on either the left or the right hand side of each of the column headers. So if I want to sort by race and see if I'm sorting descending, it's in, um, in this case, reverse alphabetical order. But if I click it again, it's now in alphabetical order. And I can do this for both um, columns that are descriptive in nature or numeric in nature. So in this case, percent is going from the lowest to the highest. Um, and if I do it in reverse, that's going from the highest to the lowest. The table columns will respond to the selections made above. So in this example, our first column represents our demographic level that we grouped, in this case, race. We also have the response level is our, is our next column, our percent estimate, our lower and upper 95% confidence intervals. RSE, again, stands for relative standard error, and there will be a flag if we need to be cautious about using the statistic. Please note that for column headers where there is a dotted line underneath, it simply means that you can hover over it and get a little more information about what this column name is. In this case, it's saying, Lower 95% CI stands for lower 95% confidence interval. Please note that when we sort by any of the columns, for example, if I sort by response level, this is only happening on the website. If we choose to download the table as a CSV, it's going to revert to the original arrangement of the table. We're near the bottom of the page here, so we can click back to top in order to go back to the top of the page, or we can simply scroll up. All right, we're now back at the top of the page. So let's take a look at the gray box again in the left-hand side, and let's look at the settings options. So if we hover over the settings button, 
it tells us that we can use this to change the color of the graph. So if we click on it, we can see that we have a menu of options here. Currently we're on the default, which is ADA accessible, but we can change it to the basic color palette, the warm color palette, or more. Once you've made your selection, simply click anywhere outside of the options to exit this menu and return back to the previous screen. Let's move over to the Trend tab. The Trend tab is near the top of the page, right next to the Indicator tab, which we just explored. When we click on the Trend tab, we'll see a graph displaying the responses of our previously selected topic and indicator over time. In this case, over time means from 2014 to 2020. Again, please notice that both the topic and the indicator stay with the topic and indicator that we previously selected, but it doesn't keep the filter choices we made underneath the indicator tab when we were looking at the stratify by demographic option. In the case of the trend tab, there are two options here. So we can stratify by demographic, which looks exactly the same like we did underneath the indicator tab, and we'll come back to this in just a moment. We also have a new option called filter indicator response level, which when you click, you can see in this case it says all, yes, or no, which corresponds to all, meaning all of the responses available for this variable, yes, meaning all those who have met the colorectal cancer screening guidelines, and no, for all of those who have not met the colorectal cancer screening guidelines. The graph and the table respond to the option selected above, and our graph has a legend in the lower left-hand corner, our, our x-axis, that is our horizontal axis, has the time, which is each year, so in this case 2014 to 2020, and our y-axis, that is our vertical axis, shows the percent estimate. So similar like we did before underneath the indicator tab, when we stratify by demographic, we see the same options. If we select sex, for example, we still have the option to filter or to group. I'm going to go back to none for just a moment. We also have the filter indicator response level. Underneath this drop down, there are three options all, yes, and no. Maybe we're only interested in looking at the Alaskans who have not met the colorectal cancer screening guidelines. In order to do that, we can simply select no, and the graph and the table will respond accordingly. Okay, let's go back and look at all. So we're going to start like we did before underneath the indicator tab and we're going to stratify by race. And for now, we're going to leave the filter indicator response level at all. When you stratify by demographic and have your filter indicator response level set to all, you'll end up with two graphs instead of one. So on the left-hand side, we have a graph for the response level equaling yes. Our x-axis is our time, so 2014 to 2020, and our y-axis is our percent estimate, in this case, from 30 to 70%. And then we have another graph showing the response level no, again, going from 2014 to 2020, with the same y-axis, 30 to 70%. Our legend is in the lower left-hand corner. We still have our plot options over here, which we'll come back to in just a moment. Again, maybe you're only interested in looking at those who have not met the colorectal cancer screening guidelines. We can filter by the indicator response level and select no. Our graph and our table below respond accordingly. Now I've scrolled down to look at the table in its entirety, but we can always scroll up or simply use the back to top button here to scroll back up to the top. So now that we see the graph and the table updated to only show us the values for no over the available years, Let's take a moment to look at a different demographic to stratify by. What if instead of race, we wanted to look at tribal health region? Go ahead and select tribal health regions underneath the stratify by demographic options. Both our graph and our table have responded accordingly. Keep in mind, this table gets really big because there's a lot of tribal health regions. I'm going to use the back to top button to go back to the top. Our graph has our legend, which is across the bottom here, with each color corresponding to a different tribal health region. Our percent estimate is still over here on our y axis. And we're still going from 2014 to 2020. 
So just like in our bar graph, we can actually hover over any of the data points to find information about that data point in particular. So for example, in 2014, I'm looking at this yellow data point and the response level is no, because we've made that selection above. It tells me the strata, which in this case is which particular tribal health region am I looking at? And the answer to that is the Yukon Kuskokwim. I see the percent estimate is 48.3% and the 95% confidence interval is 23.7% to 73.7%. But what I really wanna point out is over here in 2018, you'll see this lone data point. It's not connected to any other data points. And that's because the other available data does not meet the privacy threshold. And so therefore we've only included one data point. We just wanna point this out because the lack of data is always a possibility, regardless of the demographic we choose. All right, just like we saw previously, we can still look at all demographic levels like we are now. We can filter to only look at maybe one or two tribal health regions. For example, maybe the Anchorage Matsu tribal health region, as well as the Northwest Arctic tribal health region. You'll notice in this example, um, there's not enough data to show the Northwest Arctic tribal health region, which is why there's only one line on the graph. And in the table below, you'll definitely see that because the data is, is suppressed. So let's make a different selection and let's look at the interior. If we wanted to look at one tribal health region in comparison to the rest, we could choose the Yukon Kuskokwim, for example, which would compare the Yukon Kuskokwim region to the rest of the state. And again, um, the remainder will simply be everyone else grouped and our table will respond accordingly. We still have the plot options button here which we can use in this case to select both our years and download the trend plot. For this example, all of the years are selected from 2014 to 2020. But if you were only interested in 2016 to 2020, you could click on 2014, which would deselect it. Notice the lack of check mark. Click outside the menu for a moment and the graph and the table would respond accordingly. And again, we can download the trend plot. Go ahead and just click that download trend plot button and it will download into wherever downloads load on your computer. I want to point out that when you select years, if you select less than three years of data, you'll get an error message that simply tells you, hey, we need at least three years of data in order to display trends. So either select another indicator or you, in this case, you can add more years in order to fix this error. So let's go ahead and um, underneath selected years, select all, and we'll get that chart back from 2014 to 2020. We also have the table options below. So we can choose to download the data as a CSV. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And again, um, that will download as a CSV file wherever um, downloads go on your own computer. Just like underneath the indicator tab, the table also has its own functionality. So feel free to um, use the arrows to sort in, you know, descending or ascending order. And you can use the search button as well um, as, as needed. So let's scroll back up to the top and we're gonna look at one last feature on the trend tab. So there's this add test for trend box that we can click. This will generate a generalized linear model with a logic distribution in this gray box. And it's gonna slightly change our graph. So now you'll see a regression line here with the original data points in blue. You can hover over them to see those original data points. If you're not sure how to read this logistic regression, um, go ahead and click the help me interpret this button and a pop-up will appear telling you how to interpret this trend test. It'll tell you about p-values and what you're looking for. Now, you can download the plot with the regression line included. Simply go ahead and just download the trend plot, um, just like we did before, and you'll actually get a download of, of what you see on the screen right now. 
Please note that the table below does not actually change when you add a test for trend. This is only for when you're looking at the graph. We know that this add test for trend feature might be a little math and statistics heavy. So if you have questions about how to interpret this model or what to do with these results or what this means, please reach out to the Alaska Burfus program. Um, their contact information, if you scroll down to the bottom, um, their email is burfus at alaska.gov. Feel free to reach out to them at any time with any of your questions. So next, we're gonna move over to the geographic tab. The geographic tab is located right next to the trend tab. Go ahead and click on geographic and you'll be taken to the corresponding page. Once again, the topic and indicator will stay as the selection we made earlier, but any of the choices we made underneath the trend tab related to stratification and year selection will not stay. So for the geographic tab, we have to start with selecting a response level. This time, let's look at yes. Once we've selected a response level, both a map and a table will appear accordingly. You'll see the map of Alaska will show a legend on the right with colors in relation to the percentage. In this case, blue means a higher percentage met the colorectal cancer screening guidelines, and yellow means a lower percentage met the colorectal cancer screening guidelines. You'll also note that the other options, geographic classification, selected regional level, and selected years will default to the following. So for geographic classification, public health regions is the default. You'll be looking at the state as a whole underneath the regional level. And the selected years in this case are 2016, 2018, and 2020 by default. If you're interested in learning more about what geographic classifications are available and how exactly they're defined, use the blue eye information icon and then use the plus buttons to look at each of the different type of geographic regions. You can simply click again to minimize what you were just looking at. Once you've read through, and gotten all the information you need, go ahead and use the close button in the lower right-hand corner or the X in the upper right-hand corner to return to the previous screen. As always, if you have more questions or are unsure about the geographic classifications, feel free to seek out more information outside of this website. Let's go ahead and select tribal health regions underneath the geographic classification. Once selected, you'll see our graph and our table will respond accordingly. Let's keep it at statewide. And for selected years, let's go ahead and only select 2020. Our map responds as well as our table. Like our other graphs, the map allows us to hover our cursor over different regions to display some basic information. So for example, I'm hovering over the region known as the Yukon Kuskokwim. The response level I'm looking at is yes, and the estimated percentage of adults age 50 to 75 who have met the colorectal cancer screening guidelines in 2020 was 56.1%. The 95% confidence interval is also included in this pop-up. Note, sometimes there's not enough data to meet our privacy thresholds, and therefore this data will be suppressed and there'll be no information. This is what's happening when you see white spaces on our map, if you hover over them, you'll see that the percent and the 95% confidence interval are both listed as MA. We can try to remedy this by adding more years to our graph. So let's go ahead and add 2018 as well. We see that we've added a couple of regions simply by adding another year of data. Now, this map has some pretty fun features. If there's an area we want to enlarge, we can select it. So we can do that by left clicking on our mouse and creating a box. I've just created a box around Southeast Alaska and I can still hover over what we've just selected to look at the percent estimate and the 95% confidence interval. If you wanna to return to the whole statewide view, simply double click. We can also use the binoculars here in order to look at a bigger map that still has the same interactive features. So once again, if I'm interested in Southeast Alaska and would like to see a bigger picture of it, I can simply left click and drag a box around it. And now I'm looking at part of the Southeast Alaska 
and a slightly bigger image. Same as before, I can go ahead and double click to return to the statewide view. And once I'm done looking at this pop-out, I can simply use the close button in the lower right-hand corner or the X in the upper right-hand corner to return to the previous screen. We can also download our map, and we do this by using the download map button. Please note it's on the left-hand side of the screen underneath the geographic tab. Once you select download, a download will begin and it will be saved wherever downloads are saved on your own computer. Please note, once you download the map as a PNG file, you'll lose the interactivity that you see here on the screen. So it is simply a snapshot of the indicator we chose for the time period selected. All right, let's take a look at our table. Just like we did in our previous tabs, you'll see that we have columns that include, in this case, our tribal health region, our response level, our percentage, our lower and upper 95% confidence intervals, our RSE, that is our relative standard error, and a flag in case we need to be cautious of using this data point. Note that what's different about this table is that even though we chose the response yes, we actually see both response levels yes and no in the table. There's a couple of ways we can modify this table to make it look a little closer to our map. So we can simply use our arrow to the left or right hand side in order to look at only yes responses. So if I click once, I get all the no's first. And if I click twice, I get all the yeses first. I can also use the search button and simply type in yes, which will only give me the responses that are yes. Once again, we can use our table options to download our data as a CSV file. The CSV file will be saved wherever downloads are saved on your computer and will be opened by whatever program used to open CSV files. Please note that when the table downloads, it will download the table as it was presented originally. So it won't be able to filter like we did using the search bar or change the arrangement based on any of the selections that we made. We would just like to highlight that there is contact information at the bottom of every page for the Alaska Burfus Program. Feel free to reach out to the Alaska Burfus Program at any time with any comments or questions you might have about using the Alaska Burfus Data Center. And with that, this concludes the tutorial of the Alaska Burfus Data Center. We hope this has been a helpful video and thank you so much for your time.